I love making thinkorswim workspaces because when you make and save one, it saves everything. It saves the studies and strategies running on the chart. It even saves your active trader window setup. As I'm flicking through a couple of my swing trading workspaces here, what I want to do in today's video is hop on over from the charts tab into the flexible grid tab and focus on making a workspace specifically for day trading. Wow, the market is getting hammered. What is going on? So I've gone ahead and reset my flexible grid back to just about what you're going to see when you open this tab. My chart's going to look a little bit different. I still have my personal styling on the chart, but that's perfectly okay. It doesn't really matter. Step number one, you're going to come up to this sort of multiple square grid here. It's kind of like nine squares in a grid. It will say show grid actions when you hover over it. Click into this, then during this drop down, you're going to come down and check the customize grid box, which is going to pop up this fancy little modal. And maybe, maybe that was already there for you. If you're just getting started with thinkorswim, this might've already been there for you. But anyway, we need this because what we're about to do is we're going to set up multiple different charts on the same screen. We're going to end up setting up our flexible grid almost exactly like the flexible grid that you just saw in the intro. So I want two charts up top and two charts down bottom. And actually we're going to turn one of those charts down bottom into an active trade window. And I'll show you how to do that as well, of course. So to create the charts down bottom, I'm going to click on this plus on the bottom side here. And then for this top one, I of course want one more next to it. And for this bottom one, I of course want one more next to it. So now we have our four charts, our four modals that we can mess with. Now, within Thinkorswim, these modals aren't completely customizable. Like I can't grab this and drag it wherever I would like it to go, but they are resizable. So if you hover your mouse over sort of the separator here between the two charts, I'm going to drag this top left one to the left, make it smaller. That might be a little bit much kind of fit it up there to the left like this. And I'm going to drag my bottom one, the exactly opposite way over to the right. This is how I want my chart set up. And we'll talk about why next we'll talk about why now, first off, let's get these charts populated. So I'm looking at the spy chart in the top left. So we'll just go with spy for now. I'm going to type in spy to every single one of the charts on the screen. Don't worry. Later in this video, I'm going to show you how you can link all the charts together so that every time you change ticker, you don't have to change it in four different places. That would be super annoying. Next, I'm going to load my style into these charts. By the way, if you don't know how to do that or what I'm talking about, when you create your style from the settings cog of the chart, so you get everything set up and looking the way that you want it to look, you come into these little candlesticks here and you can save that style. That's important to do because when you create new charts like this, you can once again come into style, load style, mine, I just named mine. So here we'll do the same thing. Uh, which one is style? The style, load style, and mine. And this bottom right one, we're going to turn into the active trade window. Anyway, there's not gonna be a chart here. So for now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, why did I set up my charts in this way? I'm going to leave the daily time frame up here in the top left. I like to always while I'm day trading, have an idea of the larger macro picture of the stock that I'm trading to help confirm my bias, right? Should I be bullish or should I be bearish on this ticker based off of what it is doing with its daily chart momentum? And we're going to sort of carry that idea throughout these other charts as well. What I do, and you can decide on different time frames here, but what I do in this top right chart, I go with a five minute. And then in this bottom chart down here, I go with a one minute. This just once again allows me to keep an eye on the larger time frame hit up here in the five minute while utilizing the smallest time frame possible within thinkorswim one minute to really, really sort of narrow down and dial in exactly where I would like to get in and out of trades. Once again, if, if you want to do something different, like maybe you go one hour here and five minutes here, 
that's all completely subjective, right? You choose your own time frames, but just set them up so that your smallest is down here in the bottom, right next to your active trade window, second smallest, and then largest up here in the top left. So you'll also see in our customized grid modal right here, there is an option to either show or not show the sidebar. That is this list of options appearing on the right hand side of your chart. In this top right one, just go ahead and turn off the sidebar, clean it up a little bit. This bottom left one, we are going to also alongside the chart, we are going to turn on our live news modal. I'm also going to grab this and drag it down a bit to the smallest it will go. This now shows us the news specific to the ticker that we are looking at. Just something very nice to also have on while you are day trading. Once we have that on, we can also turn off the sidebar on this chart to go ahead and clean that one up. And as you can probably guess, this is where in this bottom right chart, we can now get our active trader window set up. You can click on the C here to actually completely turn off the chart. We don't need a chart down here at all and click on this AT and you now have the active trader window running for SPY. So the ticker that you are charting and these other sort of modals here, you are also trading with one mouse click down here in the active trade window. Let's also not forget we can now turn off this bottom right sidebar as well. Keep everything looking nice and clean. Okay, we are now set up, right? Like there's still some tweaks and some studies and stuff we're going to turn on to make this 10 times better, but the actual modals themselves are set up. So we can come back into our box of squares up here and we can uncheck customize grid. You don't want that modal in the center of all your charts all the time. That would be very annoying. Okay, next, very importantly, let's talk about how you link these stocks together. Because if I wanted to, instead of trading SPY, go trade NVIDIA, if I type it in one place, I want it to appear in all places at the same time. I don't want to have to go through and go NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. And it's especially important for this bottom right uh, active trader window because now I'm charting NVIDIA, but I'm still trading SPY, which would be very bad, right? So to do that, there is this link icon on each one of these modals. If I close this, you can see it down here. What you want to do is just select one. I'm going to go with one red, and then you simply set each modal up to that one red link. You will notice they are all changing to SPY as that is what that was set to, including now the bottom right one. So now if I go to NVIDIA from SPY, you'll notice all the charts change and the active trader window down here in the bottom also changes to now be trading NVIDIA. We can now change everything with just one, with just changing it in one place, should I say. Something else that's very cool that you can do with these linkages, if I open up this left hand pane here, I am looking at a handful of watch list gadgets. This is where I keep an eye on the custom scanners that I have built throughout the day. Here I am looking at my day trading runners strategy scanner. Well, if I change this symbol link on this watch list also to one red, now all I need to do is click on a stock on this scanner and it will automatically populate on all three charts and the active trade window. So now if anything new begins popping up towards the top of one of my scanners like this, simply click on it and everything will auto populate, be ready for you to begin trading in one click in one second. Next, I really like to have the 200 simple moving average running at least on my top left chart here. So I'm going to come into edit studies. I'm going to turn on the simple moving average study and set the input parameter for length to 200. This is just once again, a way for me to immediately, like upon clicking on a stock, I immediately get a picture of, hey, are we macro bullish? Or are we macro bearish? Are we above or below this 200 simple moving average line? You can also do the same thing with this chart up here in the top right. And maybe that is also a good idea just to get a glimpse of, hey, are we macro bullish or macro bearish kind of 
right now, right? Like, okay, the daily is bullish, but the five minute is bearish. It's below its 200 length simple moving average. So maybe this is too much of a mix of bias and I shouldn't be looking for a trade on this ticker or however you want to go about that. I just, I really enjoy making use of the 200 simple moving average to quickly identify strength of ticker. Next, I'm going to talk about strategies because that's what I do. It's the niche we cover on this YouTube channel. We build custom coded strategy studies and even scanners within Thinkorswim. If you don't already have any codified strategies, that's okay. Check out my website. It'll be linked in the description down below. You can access over 160 plus custom Thinkorswim codes. And for right now, there's even some free codes, including a strategy available over there. So go get that free strategy and then you can plug that in. Although that strategy is a swing trading one. You know what? After this video, I will put a day trading strategy in the free codes as well so that you all watching can plug in a day trading strategy and mess around with it. But anyway, I'm going to come down to my one minute chart here into studies, edit studies. And of course, I want to turn on a strategy. So I click into the strategies sub tab. All of my strategies are prefixed with DTS daytradingstrategies.net being my website. And I'm going to load in my DTS runners strategy. This is my current favorite day trading strategy. I shouldn't even say current. It just is my favorite day trading strategy. Hasn't taken any trades yet today on MP. That's perfectly fine. As we sort of denoted, MP has been kind of largely bearish throughout the day, right? Let's go look at Oracle. Oracle was a stock that was very strong. Here we go. We can see Oracle did take a pretty nice trade today. So now while I am trading, I can have an eye on a strategy that I have built and proven works through my own personal back testing. We can actually even come in and turn on my back test data labels here as well, just to see the performance of this strategy over the last 30 days on this stock and get an idea of how it's working. But anyway, I can now be keeping an eye on this while I'm trading to help give me ideas of where I should be entering and exiting. If you didn't know, strategies like this don't actually place real money trades for you. They exist to visualize where you should enter and exit as well as, and even more importantly, automate the data gathering process of back testing. So it's a visual cue. You still have to make use of the active trade window and place the orders yourself. Speaking of the active trader window, let's flick on over and shift our focus to this next. It's very important that your active trade window is set up in such a way that makes trading as easy as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to expand this arrow here and I'm actually going to check this auto send box. Now, when I go hit buy market or sell market, the order will immediately go through. It won't like pop up for confirmation, force me to make another mouse click, force me to take five more seconds just to try to place an order. Having that auto send placed is very useful. Now I'm going to come into the settings cog on my active trader window. And this is where we can adjust our buttons. I personally only ever day trade heavily traded stocks, heavy volume stocks. So I'm comfortable with buying and selling using market orders because I don't trade stocks where the spread is very bad, where my fills are going to be very poor, anything like that. If you do, if you trade lower volume, crazier volatility type stuff, then you probably want to have like a buy the ask and a sell the bid button turned on. All you need to do to do that is double click and then you can drag this up to here and you will have once again your buy ask and sell bid instead. As I said, I don't personally trade those kind of stocks. I'm good with the market orders, but if you do and if you want limit orders, that's how you do that. Next, I never reverse positions. I'm just going to turn that off. Also, this cancel, like what this cancel dot 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 means, when you click on that button, there's a pop up for like, do you want to cancel your buys? Do you want to cancel your sales? Or do you want to cancel all? Much like the auto send, I don't want to have to waste the time in that extra confirmation. So instead, I'm going to turn on the cancel all button. We will drag that up to where the old cancel button was. And now as I hit OK, you will see the reverse is gone and there is now a cancel all button. That's just going to allow me to wipe all open orders with one mouse click 
if I need to do so. You now have charts of multiple different time frames so that you can keep an eye on the larger picture to help yourself determine bias before hammering down to the one minute time frame. You have them all linked, not to mention also linked with a scanner so that when you click on a stock from the scanner, it is auto populating to all the charts and you have an active trader window that is set up and ready to allow you to place one click orders as fast as possible to get in and out of your day trading positions. Back up to our grid of boxes down to the bottom. You want to go to save flexible grid as I will call mine my day trading runners. That's what I'll call it since it has the runners day trading strategy turned on it and save. Now you can do this for multiple different workspaces. And whenever you are sort of flicking through, like I have this one that's called background. This is just so I can get a full picture with none of the grid lines or anything turned on just to get a full screen image of what a chart looks like. I can instantly come right back to my day trading runners. Once again, I'm clicking on this grid of boxes and just looking at the names of the workspaces I have saved. I can click on to day trading runners and we are right back in to what we just created. You see why I said I love creating workspaces at the beginning of this video. Now, the next step for me personally, you don't have to do this, but my next step is I am also going to share this flexible grid, day, DTS day trading runners. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and imported that share link over on my website, daytradingstrategies.net. By the way, here is how you access those free codes we were talking about a little bit earlier in this video. Obviously, once you sign up to the website, you can then navigate to the codes by clicking on this icon in the top right. We, of course, want to navigate into the thinkorswim section, so I will click on that. And from here is where you can access all the custom strategies, scanners, studies, conditional orders, so much information within this thinkorswim section, over 160 custom codes. Anyway, obviously we want to go into workspaces. And this is slightly confusing because this one at the top, it's called day trading. Maybe I should rename it, but it's not the one we just made. The day trading flexible grid we just made will be at the bottom of this page. Anyway, you're going to go ahead and copy this TOS share link. All 160 plus codes on the website come with one of these TOS share links. It's really nice how easy Thinkorswim makes it to import custom codes. Once it's copied back within your Thinkorswim, set up in the top right, open shared item, paste, preview, and import. This is DTS day trading. And like I said, for you, what you're going to do since you just uh, imported one with the flexible grid, if you want the one from today's video, is you're going to hop on over into your flexible grid to open this. But this one is just under the charts tab as you can see from this little pop-up. So this is what happens. For whatever reason, when you import a workspace in Thinkorswim, it just gives it to you as a detached pop-up. What you need to do from this pop-up is click into this box here. Once again, for you, it's going to be that grid of squares that looks like on the flexible grid. And just like we did earlier, save the grid as DTS day trading. And then once again, you open it the same way. Now DTS day trading is right here. I open it. It has all these studies turned on, the strategies turned on, the news is on, the active trader window is set up just like you like. So you can do that same exact thing once again with the workspace we built today. Import it from the website, save it from the pop-up modal that appears after import. Then you click on it from here. There you go. Everything we built today, you have running alongside you right here. So for the 2,000 plus of you, by the way, thank you so much. The website has grown bigger than I ever thought it was. Take advantage of this workspace. And hopefully for those of you that are going to sign up, feel free to also import this workspace. So that is exactly like what we covered in today's video. Do me a huge favor, hit the like button if you learned anything in today's video. If you would like to continue learning, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. My goal is to hit 50,000 YouTube subscribers by the end of the year. Please help me out with that. And by the way, YouTube thinks you'll like this video right here. And the algorithm is pretty smart. They've spent a lot of money on it, so you should probably trust it.